here. Floyd Sr. here. You know, Ricky Hatton has a comeback this weekend. You trained Ricky for a few fights, uh, 2008, 2009. Yeah, and I, and I trained him for, also, I trained him for uh, a Ricky Hatton fight, and where he said that, uh, I mean, the rumor is that he told me, he didn't tell me that he told people that uh, I overtrained him. How could I overtrain you when you're training, when you're training in the morning with me, then you train in the evening with the the guy Lee. Lee Beard. Yeah, he was training with Lee Beard in the, in the evening. So okay. it it wasn't me. It wasn't me overtraining him, and it wasn't Lee Beard overtraining him. It was him overtraining himself. Because okay. uh, you can't blame nobody else for you doing what you want to do. How how you gonna say I'm over you training you? I'm training you like I'm training everybody else. Then, then you go there and you train again. That's on you what you do. You now, know. When you first. As a matter of fact, it was behind my back anyway. But it don't make no difference about that because <clears throat> I got I got a job to do. I do my job and I do my job very well. Now, when you were first started working with Ricky Hatton for the Pauli Malinaji fight, did you guys have some decent chemistry? I mean, what did you notice about working with him? The chemistry was good. I mean, you know, it was, it was no, it was no problem. You you see how he fought? He fought, he fought very well. You know, and if he would have fought, if he would have fought with, if he would have fought with Lee Beard, it wouldn't have been no different and what was going on because, hey, you know, uh, <laughs> it wouldn't have made, I don't think it would have made no difference anyway, you know. What was going to happen was going to happen. But first of all, Lee Beard's over there talking to him, trying to talk to him in the ring. I'm talking to him in the ring. You can't have no two coaches. Okay, so. You when got to have, you, you got to have a coach and not two coaches telling you what to do and so don't blame me blame yourself now when he's when you guys had the fight for Manny Pacquiao uh, when that fight was announced did you think it was a winnable fight did you really what did you think of that did I think it was winnable <laughs> man this right here really put me in a real a complicated position because uh, you know I thought one thing, then I thought another, you know, about the win. So, you know, I just... How was the training camp for Pacquiao? Like, it, what? It, how was it? it? Well, I don't know what the, 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 how the training camp was for Pacquiao. You mean Ricky? How was Ricky's training as you guys trained for Pacquiao? We, 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 had, a, we had a good camp. We had a very good camp. And uh, everything was good. We ran good. We did everything good. Everything was on key, but then again, you know, you can't, you can't match no, uh, you can't match a guy up like uh, Pauli Marginaji and think he's going to be uh, an incredible, incredible, vicious hero like Pacquiao. Now. When, you know, Ricky Hatton, one thing about him, he has a joking personality. On HBO's 24-7, he even came into the gym one day wearing like a G-string, showing his ass, and you were real surprised. I mean, what was it, was he like, uh, what was it like well, being you know, around? It, 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 it's, nothing wrong. It, 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 it's nothing wrong with him uh, portraying uh, who he is, who he really is. But, you know, like, uh, he's, the, he's the playful person. He's... Um, He's a, a nice person to be around. Uh, you know, he likes to joke a lot. And, you know, that's that's Ricky. That's 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 Ricky. You can't, that that that's that's that guy uh, makeup, and you can't take that away from him. You know, uh, sometimes it's cool, sometimes it's not. So when you were training with him in Vegas for, as you guys got ready for Pacquiao, so you would train him during the day. Then you're saying he would also go work with Lee Beer behind your back yep, at night. Yep, he went. He, he didn't. He didn't think I knew, but I did. Okay, and that kind of. I, I just. I never even. I never even brought it to him that I did, but I knew he was training with. 
uh, what you call me, okay. at night. Okay, and that just disrupted everything you feel because he's listening well, to Well, it, it, it ain't that anyway because, you know, hey man, <laughs> uh, it is what it is, you know, like I, like I just, like I tell you, like I told you once before, you know, my, myself, I just don't see no guy that size dropping, you know, just, that's all I got to say. Well, now I understand that. The night of the fight, when you were in the dressing room, did you have like a bad feeling that maybe something bad was going to happen to Ricky, you know, inside of the MGM as a Pacquiao fight was like minutes away? I mean, how were you feeling at that time? Uh, usually the guy that I train, man, they usually win. Mm. <laughs> this guy had, this guy here had to lose like everybody else lose. For whatever case it is, mm -hmm. he had to lose, he had to lose like everybody else lose, you know. Okay.